Hey guys, it's Dan Hinden here, and I just wanted to come to you and share a little bit with you of some ways that you can love your spouse during this quarantine while we're on lockdown, while we're waiting for um, this virus to stop spreading and for life to find its new normal. We have to adapt and figure out, all right, what does it mean for us to run our businesses, to live our lives from home? And one of the things that each, I'm sure each of you have noticed is there are times when you probably feel a little stir crazy and the people in your home get on your nerves a little bit and different little things that are just minor irritations to you on a normal day might be bugging you a little bit more than they normally would. Um, and one of the things that we're seeing is China is a bit ahead of us on this curve since that's where the virus started and they're starting to see huge divorce rates spike. And so we've got to ask ourselves, all right, what's going on? How can we protect our marriages, protect our re family relationships as we are going through this so that we don't wind up in those same spots? Um, and so I wanted to come to you with six different ways that you can love and help your spouse out during this time of quarantine where we're all trying to figure out how do we navigate this new world that we're in. One of the thing, the first thing that I want to remind you is give your spouse a little bit of alone time. I, I know that this may sound strange, but even though they're the person that you love more than anyone else on this planet, it's good for us to have some alone time, some time to recuperate and think through things, to process through things. And always having someone right there next to us is encouraging and it's nice but it can also become frustrating especially for those of you who are married to introverts married to people who get their energy and their spark and their zest for life from their time being alone. So please be willing to give your spouse some time. Go to a different area of the house. Don't necessarily work right next to them. Allow them time where they aren't hearing you chomping on your food, slurping on your drinks, tapping on your keyboard. Give them time to focus and get things done because we're so used to our time at home being able to be focused and undivided attention. Well, maybe not undivided, especially if we have kids, but we're having to create new patterns in how we interact with our spouses because of the amount of time that we're together and not being able to get out, go shopping, um, go hang out with friends or getting that alone time. Even that time of our normal commute is being impacted by this and that has been a time for a lot of people where people are able to decompress and think through how life is going. Also, number two, let your spouse sleep in. This is something that um, I think my wife and I, Christine, have developed a great habit of is when we know that the other person has a big day the next day or if they've had I try to both be really intentional about, all right, we'll create a quiet environment of a morning when we get up so that the other one can sleep in and rest and adjust. And sleeping in may look different for each of you, but please let them get the sleep that they need. Just because you're home and you're awake doesn't mean that they need to get up and be up with you. 
some days they may need to get up and you may need to um, be encouraging and be their cheerleader, but when they don't have to, let them sleep in a little bit so that they can get that rest and that rejuvenation that they need. Number three, this one is for those of you guys who are parents. Take some time and get your kids away from your spouse. Let your spouse have some quiet time. Take the kids into a different room, um, cuddle and play with them and watch movies and read books and do the different things so that your spouse can have just a little bit of time away from those who may not um, understand the need for space. I know my boys are very much cuddle bugs and they love mommy. And so they are constantly trying to crawl on mommy and get mommy's attention and ask mommy for help. And so one of the things that I try and do is I try and keep the boys quiet if my wife's sleeping in or I allow her, I try to allow her some time for working. Sometimes you may even need to load the kids up into the car and just drive around the block over and over again so that, so that your spouse can get a little bit of time where they're not being experiencing the rampage of children. Number four, do the small stuff. We all know that there are certain things we do that feel like tiny things to us, but they're things that make a huge difference for our spouses. So load or unload the laundry, do the dishes, make the bed. I know that I notice that my wife does much better when I, if I'm the last person out of bed, that I make the bed and she comes in and she doesn't have to feel like, oh man, there's something that's chaotic every time she walks into our bedroom. And so pay attention to the small things. Ask your spouse, what is it that I can do that will make a big difference for you? Number five, this is one of the things that the first week of this stay at home order, my wife and I realized is we were both so busy with the kids and with our businesses and trying to get everything working and um, in the right place that we were around each other a lot, but we weren't with each other very often. And so we had to take some time and say, you know what, Let, let's schedule some time. Let's schedule some time to be with each other, to make this a priority, to sit down without the TV on, without our phones going, to give each other attention. Um, last night, one of the ways that we took advantage of this was we pulled out a uh, a low thought card game and we just played cards and chatted and talked and got to connect with one another. And finally, number six that is give each other grace. You're going to do things that annoy the other person and they are going to do things that annoy you. It's really, it, it's, part of being human is we have different preferences and sometimes we're, we snap, sometimes we don't treat each other as well as we ought to, but I want to encourage you. God has given you grace through Jesus Christ. God has loved you and loved you well. And so take this opportunity to say, you know what? I know that this annoys me and it frustrates me, but I'm going to give grace. I'm going to not take offense. I'm going to say, you know what, I, I forgive before this even gets a chance to fully take root in my heart and be like, why did they do this? So I hope that this has been helpful for you. The six ways that you can love your spouse while on lockdown, give them some alone time. 
let them sleep in, keep the kids in a quiet space, do the small stuff, prioritize one-on-one -on -one time, and of course, give grace. Give grace like Jesus and protect and save your marriage in this time of quarantine and lockdown. God bless. So glad that you joined us. Have a good one.